So this is Brian Jepson here at the March 2014 Geek Dinner with Danny Warshe of G-Form. And you folks started in a, a barn, is that is that right? We did, in 2010 in North Situate. We were sitting around a table, same table we have as our conference room table, poetically. And, and, and wow. uh, we were experimenting with some different kinds of chemistries that would provide impact protection. And we discovered one that we uh, eventually decided to focus on. So what, what you folks make is, is padding uh, for products and humans. We do. We protect humans. So, for example, this is a uh, knee and shin guard, and we use the same basic technology to protect things like an iPhone. Now, tell me about the technology and what it has to do with Silly Putty and, and Oobleck. Well, it's part of this family of chemistry called non-Newtonian chemistry. Right. Now, when I hear non-Newtonian, I think, you know, something magical. Sounds like it violates the laws of nature. Exactly. And but it looks like it does because it right. behaves in ways that are atypical. I mean, you had a question, and, and maybe I'll mention it before you talk about what it does, but somebody said, well, where does all the energy go? And why they ask the question? Because what happens is you get this material, it's soft while you're wearing it and playing around with it, but then... Yeah, it behaves in a way that's counterintuitive. So, for example, our knee and shin guard here, it's hard to tell maybe on the video, but it's very soft, it's pliable, flexible, lightweight, yeah. it's thin. It does not look like this would protect you from anything. No, no, And yet no. this is the state of the art in impact protection. And why? Because it behaves in a different paradigm from how usual padding works for impact protection. Usual padding is based on the paradigm of deceleration. And that means that the thicker it is, the more it will decelerate the impact, hoping that by the time the 100 mile an hour fastball hits Dustin Pedroia's elbow, the huge pad that he wears will decelerate it so it doesn't hurt. Right. The problem is, it doesn't work all that well, and also, it's a function of how thick it is. So you watch Dustin Pedroia up at bat, or Big Poppy, or any baseball player, or most athletes in most kinds of sports, and they're wearing big, thick pads and very hard, inflexible pads, because to this point, no one knew you could operate impact protection any other way. Our paradigm is completely different. It's not a function at all of how thick the padding is. It's a function of the way this non-Newtonian chemistry undergoes a phase change, changing from this semi-solid to a solid, and in the process, that energy associated with the impact is dissipated, absorbed and dissipated. I mean, so some of that energy is going to rearranging the molecules. Yeah. Some of the energy pushes back on the object that hits it. The energy is dissipated, absorbed at the molecular level. Right, okay. In a way, and, and you can think of it, a phase change is like an ice cube melting or water freezing into ice. Anytime you change phase, you um, transfer a ton of energy. Yep. Either absorbs or releases. Okay, so it changes phase, that uses energy, and then it goes back to its original phase. It goes back phase. to its normal state. So this very soft, pliable, lightweight, thin pad is what you'll experience almost the entire time you're wearing it. You won't notice you're wearing it until there's some impact that will trigger and then that it, phase change. For a split second, it, be, it becomes the body armor you need, and then it goes back to so its normal state. Now, if people think you're just making stuff up, they could go to their pantry, right? And they could get some cornstarch, I believe. Is that right? There's different kinds. There's other examples of non-Newtonian chemistry. But so the one is called oobleck. Yep. And it's made out of water and cornstarch. There's a great video on YouTube. If you Google oobleck, it will show you these two really funny guys who've made a pool of cornstarch and water. When they run across it surface, their feet hit the surface really hard, and they induce that same kind of phase change. As a result, they don't sink. The other piece of it is, if you don't hit it hard, it doesn't induce that phase change, and so that if they walk slowly across the oblique, they will sink. It's similar to this. This will induce a phase change and become really hard only when you need it to be. If you slowly hit this, you don't need it to be hard, yeah. and it doesn't induce it. And, and same thing with Silly Putty. You hit it with a silly hammer, it'll actually similar. it'll crack. Peanut butter is another Oh, that's of, messy. Of, uh, oh, well, so is the cornstarch, but, yeah. but that rinses right off. 
the surface of some paints can behave like a non-Newtonian chemistry. The, the issue with us is it's not the underlying chemistry that's really the huge advantage for us. It's part of it, but not the, the, the breakthrough was in how we were able to mold this technology. Right. I, I imagine you know the first idea you had might have been to paint oobleck all over baseball players. Not exactly, okay. but it's creative. Um, <laughs> we figured out a way of molding this underlying chemistry in a sandwich of fabric and film and do it in a way that mimics the way your body flexes, do it in a way that looks really interesting, and most important, protects your body now, from impact. Now, speaking of molding it, how you mold it is, is, is really cool, but where you mold it was of particular interest uh, to this audience. You are unique in that you have global distribution, but your supply chain is um, all parts of it are within a one hour drive? Approximately, yeah. It's all in New England, most of it in um, Rhode Island. Wow, so mold making, you've got CNC machines, you've got um, the fabric, fabric. The, film, the laminate, the chemical, the molding, the cut and sew. All of that is, you know, we're in downtown Providence. Uh, most of it is within a 20 minute drive. And um, I think the furthest you'd have to go to get to any of our suppliers is about an hour. And that's served you very well. You told a story tonight of when you when you were given exactly five days to, or not given, you, one of your distributors lamented that you didn't have a, a product that they wanted, that they needed in five days, yet, in fact, you managed to not only produce it, but get it to them in, in where were they? They were in Dubai, and they were hoping, fantasizing uh, that they could get a pro. They weren't even imagining it, frankly. They, right, were, they were lamenting that they didn't have one in time for a trade show five days from now. And uh, we offered to get them one. I think they thought we were crazy, that we didn't understand that it was five days from then. And uh, we leveraged our local supply chain in a way that would have been impossible virtually anywhere else in the world. Yeah, because nothing's sitting on a boat. Nothing, you're not, nothing's getting held up at customs. You're, everything is just right, right here. And, you right. Just, and you there's can... virtually no other place I can think of. I, I um, speak about this all over the world. I was recently in South Africa where people literally gave me a standing ovation because they couldn't conceive of how any company could develop a completely new prototype line in five days. That's that's amazing, and, and, and Rhode Island gets some of that standing ovation. Rhode Island should. Um, well, a huge part of that is due to the fact that we are here in Rhode Island and able to leverage a local supply chain in which we're responsible for roughly 600 jobs. And uh, those people are really happy to be contributing to our success, and we're really happy to have them as part of our team. The other piece of that that's notable is made in the United States, we're discovering means a lot. In it does. all parts of the world. So it's effective in, in terms of communicating our value and uh, the quality, and that brand association of being U.S. made is really valuable. That's wonderful. And U.S. made and Rhode Island made. Danny, thank you so much for joining us this month. It's my great, pleasure. Really wonderful stuff, wonderful story. Thanks for having me.